Bible study today, will you turn please to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading with verse 20. That's uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 20. You recall that in our last study we discussed the various activities of God in a creative week from the first through the fourth days. And you remember that in each one of these days of activity, we have this concluding statement, and the evening and the morning were the first day or the second day, and so forth. With the creation of the sun and the other luminaries on the fourth day, then the day cycle was governed by the luminaries, such as the sun and the moon, and particularly the sun. Now, this is an interesting fact, because the same expression occurs from the fourth day through the sixth day, that the evening and the morning were such and such a day. And this suggests the fact that there is not a change in the length of time designated by uh, this expression. And consequently, it's quite uh, natural for us to uh, take this to be 24-hour day periods. And particularly when you consider the fact that in such verses as Exodus chapter 31 and verse 17, where the Lord speaks of the Sabbath day being given to Israel as a sign between himself and that nation, that in six days the Lord uh, made the heaven and the earth and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. And the normal use of language would indicate that this refers to a 24-hour day period. So we do not have any indication then in the Word of God that these days of Genesis chapter 1 refer to long periods of time, such as a thousand years in each day, or etc. But normally, just a 24-hour day period or thereabouts. And so it's the normal thing to accept it on its face value. But you recall on the first day, light was brought into being, which, of course, is the essential prerequisite for life and existence. Now, this is essential light. On the second day, a firmament was made by the Lord, and that firmament divided the waters from above the earth from the waters on the earth. On the third day, the waters on the earth were gathered together into what God designated as seas. And the dry land appeared, and vegetation then was brought into being. On the fourth day, the sun, the moon, the stars, the light holders, the luminaries were brought into existence to divide the day from the night, and they were also given for signs and for seasons and to be the instrument through which essential light would be diffused upon the earth, the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And now we come to the fifth day in this creation week. In verse 20 we read, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth and upon the firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So on the fifth day we have, first of all, waters bringing forth living creatures. And from the waters of this planet Earth were brought forth both the marine animals and the flying creatures that relate to this Earth. Now this has reference to their bodies. It does not have reference to their life. So, these things were brought forth from the waters. 
But then in verse 21, we have for the second time in this chapter a statement that God created something. You recall in chapter 1 and verse 1, we read God created the heaven and the earth. And this indicates that God brought into being, out of nothing, all existent material in the universe. And he brought this into being without secondary causes. He brought it into being without pre-existing materials. Now, when we come to verse 21, we read that God created animal life in whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. So there came a new act of creation, that is, of bringing something into being without pre-existing materials and without the use of secondary causes, for this is the Hebrew word bara again, and it means that God created animal life. Oh, the bodies in which animal life lived were brought into being through a secondary cause as the waters brought forth the bodies of the whales and the sea monsters and the fishes of the sea and also the bodies of the fowl of the air. But it took the creative act of God to put animal life within those bodies. And so we're told that God created this life on the fifth day of this creation. Not only did God bring into being their bodies from the waters and created their life directly, yet we're told that when God looked upon these sea monsters, living creatures that moved in the waters, these fishes, when he saw that the waters brought forth abundantly these bodies and God created their life and the winged fowl, it says that God saw it, that it was good. That is, it uh, measured up to that purpose for which God brought them into be, and it not only measured up to that purpose, but it was satisfactory. God saw that it was good. And then we have a new thing introduced here in uh, verse 22. God bless them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And so God then gave these sea animals and the fowl of the air the ability to reproduce and he pronounced his blessing upon these creatures and commanded them to fill the waters and to multiply, that is, the fowl were to multiply in the earth. And then the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth every living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and every living thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now here's a very interesting statement. God spoke to the earth and said, Let it bring forth living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the field. And then it said, God made the beast of the earth and the cattle and the creeping things. And in this particular verse, Moses uses a different word. It's the word asa. Whereas in verse 22, God created animal life. Animal life already having been created out of nothing, there was no necessity to create new animal life for the earth. So God simply made the beast of the earth and the cattle and the creeping thing on the earth. Now, the word bara denotes to make something out of no pre-existing materials. 
So to create something out of nothing. And this emphasizes the product of a genius. And God certainly was genius in the creative act. The word asa has the primary idea to form, to shape, or to cut. So it means to work, or to labor, or to make. And it denotes to make something by labor, and it also implies the use of pre-existing materials. And so this emphasizes the product of a laborer. And so when it says God made earth creatures, instead of God created earth creatures, God made these earth creatures on the sixth day. It simply he constructed them, he produced them out of pre-existing materials. So we have in these verses, verses 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, and 25, evidence that there is such a thing taught in Scripture as both immediate creation, which is the creation of something out of nothing, without the use of pre-existing materials, and without the employment of secondary causes. There is also mediate creation, which means to bring into being with the use of pre-existing materials or with the employment of secondary causes. So, the bodies of the animals of the sea and of the air were brought into being by the use of secondary causes. The bodies of The beasts of the field and the cattle and the creeping things of the earth were brought into being by the use of secondary causes. And uh, then God created animal life in verse 21, which is a new thing brought into being out of nothing. God made the earth, that is the animal life of the creatures of the earth. He used pre-existing materials. So we have immediate creation, the bringing into being of something out of nothing, immediate creation, the bringing into being of something out of pre-existing materials. And this is the distinction of these two words as used in the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Now this is important because when we come to our next study and we look at uh, what God has to say about the creation of man, we discover both in connection with him immediate creation bringing into being his body and immediate creation creating human life. Now, my dear friends, we have a wonderful God who was prolific in his creation. And this God who was prolific in creation cares for that which he created, sees us in our misery because we are sinners, and has provided a way for us to be saved in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Him, won't you trust Him today? You've been listening to another lesson by Mr. Jesse Boyd, who served as a member of the Bible faculty at Bob Jones University. These studies were recorded by Mr. Boyd during his earthly ministry. Join us again next time for more helpful studies on the Bible Institute of the Air coming to you from Bob Jones University in Greenville, South Carolina.